on to the sixth item on our agenda, um, Ninth Ferry Road. I request to rezone 15.33 acres from EA to PD. Yes, ma'am, thank you. And, and what I would like to do is um, to start off, I, I have a better copy of the updated site plan that I've sent out, and I just wanted y'all to have um, within your packet. The site plan hasn't changed from the one that we emailed to you, but because of the size, we had to go by and get it specially scanned in so we have a better copy for y'all to look at. See the facts and figures a little bit there. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> um, ultimately, what is um, what is being requested in this case is a zoning that we don't see very often, but it's called rural plan development. And it is a site-specific zoning. <coughs> ultimately, why the applicant needs this zoning is because his current use as an event facility has become successful. Um, the history that is given in your packet that you'll see in the letter of intent again in staff's report is that this property started off for um, basically family type entertainment and then requests have been made to use it and it has grown and become successful and now it's at a point to where we're working with the applicant where the request has turned into a successful business and we're trying to permit it as a business. <laughs> Um, the applicant has worked with us on this site plan. We finished this up, I believe, last Thursday, like we anticipated. And this site plan is something that we are uh, recommending for approval for with three conditions. The three conditions are listed within your packet. Those have not changed. Uh, ultimately, that is what is being requested is um, for about 15, a little over 15 acres off of Knights Ferry Road to go to what's called rural plan development. And we are uh, hoping that this can be something that be an asset to this area um, with these conditions that we've worked on. Um, so with that, I know the applicant is here tonight. Really, the only update I have is to make sure that y'all have the most current copy of that site plan uh, for your consideration. It is the same one we sent out last Thursday. It's just a better copy for y'all. Um, last Thursday was basically a picture. This is a, a, a professional scan. So, uh, With that, it's ready for your consideration tonight, should you wish to move forward. Okay. Are there any questions for the staff from the commission? No questions? We'll move on to the public um, portion. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this application? Please come to the podium. Thank you, Madam Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Ed Wine. The address is 4815 Mount Sign Road. And uh, I'd like to take a few minutes to give you an idea of what Agro Farm has become. Agro Farm uh, started, uh, my wife and I purchased this property. We already had our residents on a farm that we owned behind this property. This property came available and we purchased this property in 1986. And it is a working pecan orchard very beautiful to begin with and then with the establishment of the pecan orchard our family is a a, a horse riding family uh, we also put in the stables the horses and the fencing the landscaping and that thing that thing and then also it's become an event facility due to the uh the uh the upgrades that we made there the facility is very beautiful very well landscaped and that type of thing. Over the years, I've been, uh, due to the facilities that we've placed there, it has become the neighborhood kind of meeting place. Uh, the local churches in the Redland community there, out on Knights Ferry, the local churches out there, you know, now they've asked us uh, birthday parties, anniversaries, weddings of the local children out there as they became of age and we've always done this type of thing that uh as being part of the community there uh we've allowed them to use the facility the facility is and then overall over all the years that we've been there the farm has also become very popular 
not only with the community, but also with the town itself about Austin. To give you an idea, uh, Redland Baptist Church, uh, Mount Zion Baptist Church, or, uh, Mount Zion Methodist Church, First Baptist Church, Baptist National Mission Board, Pregnancy Support, Lowndes County High School, for uh, they have they hold their planning meetings, small planning meetings and that thing for the year. They found out about us. They asked us if they could use the farm for that. Our facility there will see about 150 people, and we've all done we've always done this. Also, there's a local planners, uh, local men's non-denominational group, you know, Christian group called Planners, and it was for it's been meeting for 17 years. Uh, the meeting place used to be in Hay Hire, but that farm was sold, and they also came to us and asked if planters could be moved to High Grove Farm. It's been there about a little over four years now, and it's also the Christian Men's Organization of Businessmen in Valdosta meets there the second Tuesday night of every month, you know, on that. The facility itself, uh, has become very popular as an event group. And the main thing we do out there now, we still do the anniversaries, the birthdays, and the families situations. But we also have become a very, very popular wedding venue due to the, you know, aesthetic value of the farm at the Con Orchard. All the buildings are in an extremely, you know, beautiful condition, <coughs> well kept, you know, all the landscaping out there is a beautiful situation like that. And today, things are a little bit different than they were in my day. Uh, according to the books, uh, The Knot, uh, and several other wedding books, you know, it has become very evident that these young brides and grooms today do not want to go to their local churches and get married. The figures that we have right now, approximately 80% of the wedding venues, these brides and grooms want country weddings in a location that is like ours. And uh, that's what we've developed out there due to the uh, aesthetic value. Uh, all the buildings at High Grove Farm, I'm an industrial contractor in one of my businesses. I do, uh, as an industrial contractor in the fertilizer business, we do uh, changing out of equipment, reconfiguring buildings in that business in the large fertilizer you know, facilities. But I also have a demolition company. The Lund Company is a demolition and dismantling company of buildings and structures. In this business, uh, we also do not go, we don't, don't use explosives, but we do go up to 10 stories in that business. I've been in that business for 29 years, so I very well understand structure, code, and this type of thing. So, my being this is my personal home out here and my personal farm, all the buildings that have been built out there have been built to code of the day. Now, these buildings are, are older buildings. The barn out there, one of the barns was built about 27 years ago. You know, the pond, the pond house was built about 18 years ago, and the stables were built about 17 years ago. But it did meet the code of the day, plus the construction that I do in it. If you don't understand how a building is built, you can't understand how to dem demolish or dismantle the building. So I had a very good education in the structure, you know, and codes of building today. Uh, all of the events out there that we've had these past nine years since we started the anniversaries, birthdays, weddings, and that thing, we do not just lease them the facility and just let them have their way with it. It's supervised by us. We make sure that also that all of the events, the people that are coming there, along with the brides and the grooms, understand that there are certain county ordinances that have to be adhered to in regards to the size of the guest list. Our average size of our guest list of weddings today 
is approximately 150 guests. You know, another thing we do, there is music and there is volume and then there's cutoff times, you know, as the county has ordinances on that. They know that before the event, we make sure that that is followed in regards to the level, you know, of the music, you know, for the dancing, and also for the cutoff time, which is at 10 o'clock in the evening. We make sure that's adhered to. We also have our safe parking areas. That's a controlled area. We do not, in our supervision of our guests out there as they come, uh, if they were going to use the stable as a rehearsal dinner, then we park in the wedding parking lot across the driveway. You know, so that way the parking lot will not be next to the stable. We also oversee the children. If a child was sent to the parking lot to get something out of the car, you know, that child is not allowed by us to water over there and stay. We would go up and make sure the child got what he was supposed to and then go back to the event facility. You know, years and years ago, Evelyn and I, my wife, you know, we had a situation in our family where a child got run over in the parking lot. This is something that is not going to happen to our own farm because we govern everything and we watch over what happens out there. The day of the wedding, we moved the parking from that area over to the stable area. Therefore, the wedding function is on the west side of the property. We did the same thing there to make sure that a safe situation is developed by in that thing. So movement of all people and children is a high concern of ours. And all this is explained to the event people prior to leasing the property for the wedding. I Grove Farm in the nine years that this has been going on has never had a complaint from any neighbor, the community, any guest, or event planner or event owner along with the brides and the grooms, you know, so we have never had a complaint, you know, by anything that went on out there. We're very attentive to our neighbors, the surrounding property, and that that thing, so we want to make sure that our neighbors, you know, are, are all, always foremost in our mind. You know, this has been going on for approximately nine years. I want to give you a little scenario here to understand the wedding industry. And I'll make this as brief as possible. Uh, our average wedding, as I said before, is 150 guests. And if you understand a wedding, and the reason I'm putting this in is because I want you to understand the stress of the infrastructure that has it on the farm, you know, or any facility. There. The arrival time is 15 to 30 minutes prior to the wedding. You know, the people sit down at the wedding site. Our wedding sites are outdoor sites underneath the trees. If the bride decides to put a tent up, they put a tent up in that time. Most, about, probably it's five to seven percent use tents. Most of them use the pecan trees because it's a very beautiful site. The wedding lasts approximately 30 minutes. As soon as the wedding's over with, 25 percent of the people leave. They go to the parking lot, get in their car, and leave. They came from that type of thing. So if that, that under that scenario, that leaves 112 people. Sir, sir, um, you're um, going to your cutoff time. I was trying to um, wrap it up. You got like 30 seconds. Okay, then. What I'm trying to show here is, you know, 112, after food service, somebody eats something, approximately 30 to 45 minutes, 50% of them are to leave. You know, after the music and dancing, approximately 45 minutes to an hour, the other 50% of that group is left there to leave. You know, the brides and the grooms, approximately an hour after that, they throw the flowers, get in the car, and they're ready to go on the honeymoon. So it's not like you have 150 guests there for four, five, six, seven hours. You know, this stands true in every wedding I've ever seen or we've ever had out there. So in about three hours, it goes from 150 guests down to about 25 people, you know, and it's over with, you know. I'd like to entertain any questions you have. Questions for the commission, for the speaker? Uh, I, I have a question. Um, 
I know you had places up there on the ponds and nice looking houses and stuff. Do you have any overnight events like no. you rent those out overnight or anything? We like do that? not have any overnight events. Okay, that's and we are not going to have any overnight events. I, I appreciate the answer. Uh, the uh, second question was there's three conditions on here. I'm sure you're familiar with those. You have talked to the staff yes. about the limitations of the uh, EA zoning restrictions you'd be under in the future if you agree with all yes, this. So you're satisfied? Yes. Okay, thank you. That's all the questions. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there any other person in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this application? Hearing none, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition of this application? Discussion from the commission. Do we have any discussion from the commission? I just have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Damn it, uh, the revised site plan that yes, was provided, I only saw minor revisions. They removed the freestanding sign, mm -hmm. and the other thing was they added some landscaping um, where it says where the service road used to be, so that's not going to be ignored anymore. No, and they, um, you know, the sign. The sign probably should still maybe be depicted on the site plan. That probably was just an oversight on our behalf because the sign is there and it's yes, existing. It stay. Yes, ma'am. And so then the, and we'll probably get that updated on the, uh, in a new site plan. But the, the major change was you can see that the buffer uh, to the, uh, next to the service road, um, the former site plan showed the buffer along that property line. And we went out to the property and staff really, there's only one residence adjacent, directly adjacent to this. And on this site plan, if you look on the screen, that residence is right about here along the Perry Road. And so staff was primarily concerned with making sure that residence had some form of buffer. And that's what that shows is, I think it's probably already in the ground, um, but Mr. Lund went ahead and, and Ms. Lund went ahead and planted some Ely Agnes there to serve as a buffer. So that's just depicting that change. So that was the major change on the site plan. The sign uh, should still be up there, but that's just a little oversight that probably so, should be on there. So the requirement for the additional buffer along the property line yes. is no longer required? That's right. We There's existing vegetation along the property line. You know, and that property line is roughly about a thousand feet. And Carmel and I made a site visit and just said, we really are primarily concerned with about the 250 feet that's adjacent to that residence. Okay. And Mr. Lund agreed to plant some additional shrubbery there, uh, which I believe is probably in the ground, but is new as opposed to this request last week. That's and so he just depicted that additional buffer there, and we're, we're satisfied with the way that's depicted. And is there a service road that remains there? Yes. Okay. We were originally proposing the buffer to be on the, um, between the service road and the property line, because we thought that that distance was going to be a problem. Um, but where he's depicted it between the pecan rows is probably more like 40 feet which exceeds our standards okay. um, so it really blocks that service drive as well as the residents and we felt like that was suitable because our main purpose was to buffer the residents from the event facility not necessarily from the service drive but that service drive was just a little two-lane driveway they used to get back to the, the hay barn and as emergency access if they need it when someone is is leaving the wedding okay. Thank you. Any other <coughs> Hearing none, I will entertain a motion from the commission. Uh, sure. yes. um, I have had the opportunity to go to uh, some of the events that Mr. Atkins going to place down there from the church event to the uh, birthday parties, etc. And everything you said is correct. I, I do know that. Uh, it has been nothing but an asset, as far as I know, to the community, and it's certainly no uh, liability. I see out there for the community. And therefore, I would like to uh, make a motion that we recommend approval from EA to PDR uh, with the three conditions that's listed on uh, our report. Thank you. We have a motion by Commissioner Willis. Do I have a second? Second by Commissioner Paul. 
All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your hand. The motion carries and approved unanimously.